Welcome back to video number six, where we are talking about the Microsoft Azure platform and how to access different resources using the Python SDK. So in our previous video, we talked about specifically the Azure Python SDK and how much of a beast of <laughs> Python package that is and just how many packages are in it and all sorts of different things. Additionally, we set up our environment variables so that way we can leverage the default Azure credentials. So this is a way that Azure will authenticate our wonderful application or our service principle and then making sure it's authorized to use uh, the particular resource. So what we're going to do is now that kind of everything is there, we're going to actually write a very simple script to mimic how it would look when it comes to accessing a resource using Python. So <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import some objects. The first one is going to be Azure Identity. And then from there, we're going to import the default Azure credential. Now, hopefully at this point, you should know what that object is. We covered it in the previous video, but this is going to be uh, verifying our identity. Additionally, we're going to be using a resource inside of this particular script, and that is called Key Vault. And then inside of Key Vault, there is secrets. And then inside of that secrets, there are the secret clients. So uh, Key Vault is basically a service that Microsoft Azure provides where you can store sensitive information. It uses cryptography and all sorts of different things to make sure that it's secure. And additionally, it's a really nice way where if you want to make sure that your information is secure, but still access it from different platforms like the data factory or this and that, it's just easier to use your key vault instead of storing that information in separate files. So this is again, a nice centralized place where all that information is hopefully secure. And then you can grab information from that vault and then use it to do things like connect to other services inside of your script. So I really like this method. I mean, you don't technically have to do this, but I personally think it's a more secure approach. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to initialize your credentials. So initialize our credentials. And so we'll call this default credential, and this will equal our default Azure credential. And then additionally, we are going to create a secret client. So we're gonna create a secret client and we'll store this in a variable called secret underscore clients. We will uh, initialize this client and then we need two pieces of information. One is the vault URL and I'll explain where to get that in a second. And then additionally, we need our credentials. Well, in our case, our credentials is basically what we defined up above. We're gonna be using our default Azure credential. And then once we've created this client, what we're then going to do is we're going to get a secret. Now I do uh, need to get another piece of information that is our vault URL. So this is the URL that we need to provide in order to grab uh, information from our vault. Now. In my situation, you can find this information very easily on Microsoft Azure. So if you go to the portal, once it loads, now remember I have my dashboard as the default one. You can just type in key vault and you should see it here if it's one of your recent ones or you can just do key vault and guess what? It's right there. And then you can also see a specific resource. So in this case, I have one for Sigma coding. Now, when you click it, you will be redirected to your overview page. And so from here, um, you can see different things about it. Uh, one of the pieces of information is your vault URL. So you can copy that. And then from here, I'll just show you. I have multiple secrets in here. One of those is the my test secret sigma. So this is a just a test variable, something sensitive in there, but you can see I use it for other things like uh, connection strings uh, for my blob storage account, and then uh, for Azure functions. So I have functions that I use as well. So I'm just gonna copy this and then paste it in there. And then <clears throat> just to demonstrate something, I'm gonna run my Python file and terminal. So nothing happened. 
It's very important to understand something. Nothing actually happens, no authentication happens until you actually try to use the resource. So right now I've just created a client. I haven't used that client. So nothing's going to happen in terms of authentication until I actually use the resource. And so what that's gonna look like is so if I want to grab a secret, so if I want to get a secret, it's very simple. I can get a secret. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it my secret equals secret client. I'm going to get secret. So in this case, I just need to provide the name of my secret. And that's just what you see on this page. So in this case, I want to do my test secret Sigma. So my test secret Sigma. This will return a key vault secret object. And that particular object is a uh, has a property called value. So I'm going to print out the secret value. And then from here, I'm going to print my secret value. Bam. Let's see what happens. Oh, God. what happened? It didn't work. We did all the steps. Ah, this is where things can kind of get interesting, depending on the service that you are using. So some services, you need to make sure that your service principle that you created using the CLI can access that resource. So remember how a few video, videos ago I said, hey, you've got to be able to access that resource, right? We have to define the access policy. So how do we do that? Well, very simple. I am going to go back to my key vault. And then if you go down here to access policies, <clears throat> you can see all the existing access policies. Now give it a second to load. Oh, so I already have some in here, but I sure as heck don't see my Sigma test one, right? So I need to add a new access policy. So in this case, I can use a configured template. So you don't have to specify this, but I technically like to do it just because most time it, it's easy, right? I mean, it's just easy to kind of use it. In this case, I want key and secret management. So this will allow me to access keys and secrets. You can see all the permissions it now has. So it has key management operations, but it doesn't have cryptographic operations and it doesn't have privileged key operations. Additionally, I have some secret management operations, but it doesn't have purge. I have no certificate man management operations. So these are the templates and it defines permissions. Now I need to select my principal. Now, this is where I forget what the heck I named it. What did I name it? Now, let's just go back here. And then it will be, where did I put it? I cannot believe I just forgot what the heck I named it. <laughs> oh, Lord, hold on. Let me go back to my thing, because I swear to God I had it there. Service principle test. Here we go. I swear to God, my memory sometimes. All right, so we'll do service principle test. You can see right here. So we're going to select that one. So I'm going to do that. And then that looks like it's all good. And then I'm going to add it. OK, great. I want you to notice something. You have to click save. If you don't click save, the operation technically hasn't been done. So now when I go back here, I should be able to see it. It might take a second or two, but bear with it. Perfect. So now I've accessed the resource. I got my secret and I printed out that secret value. And that, my friends, although a long-winded explanation over multiple videos, is running through what I would call some very important concepts when it comes to using Microsoft Azure 
using the SDKs and just in general when it comes to using it across different resources. So if you have any final questions, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, that concludes this particular portion of the Azure series. In our next series, we are going to be leveraging, I think we're gonna do Cosmos database first. Yeah, I think we're doing Cosmos, or maybe we're doing SQL Server first. Anywho, we're doing a few, and then we're gonna tie that in with the Azure Data Factory, which is really neat. And I'm gonna love doing a tutorial on that one. That one's gonna be fun. But yeah, that's kind of what's upcoming. And then I'll try to do a channel update, maybe Tuesday, I'm hoping, if I can do it. Um, Cause I do wanna update some of the items regarding um, the, ad, uh, the Patreon stuff, just because um, I wanna keep doing the Azure services, but obviously that's gonna cost some money depending on the resources that we're doing. And in that situation, if you wanna help contribute to the channel, but then at the same time, get access to some data sources that I will be parsing for people, um, that will be a nice way of doing it. So hopefully I can entice some people a little bit, right? All right, thank you again for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.